Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to another RP1 tutorial on this channel and today we are going to be going orbital. So what this is going to be is a tutorial on how to build your first orbital rocket in a career save in RP1. So what I have done is I've created a brand new RP1 game and I've cheated myself a little bit of science just to make this demonstration and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off in research and development and show you the nodes that I've unlocked that are going to give me the materials and the engines that I need in order to build the rocket that I want to build. So what we've got, we've got up to 1956 to 1957 orbital rocketry. We've got early solid rocket engines. We've got material science up until satellite era material science. We've got satellite era electronics research. We've got satellite era science and then we've got avionics prototypes. And I haven't gone and I haven't unlocked any of the supersonic development science because I don't actually need that for what I'm going to be doing. This is everything that we're going to need. And this will be able to achieve our first orbital contract as well as our first scientific orbital contract. So in order to achieve that scientific contract, we do need this satellite era science unlocked because it provides us this Geiger Muller counter and we do need one of those in order to fulfill the contract requirements. Now that I've shown you the technology that we're going to be working with, well, it's time to get on to the main focus of this video, and that is, of course, going orbital. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to grab some procedural avionics. Now we're going to set this to science course, so we're not going to be able to control this. We're going to switch to avionics prototypes. I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to make it a smooth cone because I really like the look of smooth cones, and I think this will be what we want. So we're going to set the top to zero, we're going to set the bottom to 400 millimeters, and then we're going to reduce the length just a tad. Ideally, we want our avionics utilization, which you can see here, to be as close to 100% as possible. Now, in order to complete that first scientific satellite, well, this needs to last up to two hours in space. So we're going to set our electric charge to 300. Now, if we come out of there, we can see that in this lovely Kerbalism screen down here, which you can access by clicking this button here, well, we've got a duration of three hours and five minutes. So that's going to be good for our first scientific satellite. Unfortunately, we do need some scientific experiments on board as well. So we're going to open up the action window again. We're going to navigate down to configuration. We're going to configure experiments. And we are just going to scroll through these until we get radiation detector one because that is the experiment that we need in order to complete that contract. Now, we can grab some more scientific experiments, and I think what I'll do is I'll just place a thermometer and a barometer on here, but nothing else, because like I've already mentioned, we want to save as much weight as we possibly can. There we go. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a round one because, you know, I think that looks a little bit better. Now that we have got our pro core all done, we are going to go over to coupling and we are going to grab ourselves a procedural decoupler. So what we're going to do is we are going to make this the same diameter because this is going to be the only stage that remains in space. Well, this stage will as well, but this will be our main stage that we get up to space. So I'm going to get rid of the fillet. We are going to get our length down as much as possible, try and save on that all important weight. And there we go. That's that done. That's that stage. That was rather simple. Now we're going to be working on our final stage, our stage that will achieve our orbit. And what I'm going to be grabbing for this is going to be a separate structure modular tank. Now, the reason for this is because separate structure tanks are the cheapest and we kind of want to be saving as much money as we possibly can. So we can see we've got a steel tank here at the moment and our dry mass for this is very high. This is why I researched that material science. What we want to do is we want to set this to separate structure aluminium to high pressure for the engine that we are going to be using. We're going to reduce our diameter down to 400 millimeters again and we're going to up our length to three meters. Now that we have done that, that is the perfect tank to grab one of these Aerobees, that's right, this is going to be a Space Bee stage, and we are going to change the Aerobee configuration, so we click on Engine here, we purchase the AJ-1027, perfect. Now, we're going to fill this up with the required fuel, so we can just go and select that there. So we can have a look, this engine's rated burn time is 52 seconds, and if we go over here, if we take it off and place it back on again, it's 52 seconds, you can see that over there, so this 400 millimeters by three meter tank is perfect for this. Now, you may notice my ignition failure rate 
is currently at 5%. Obviously, getting to your first orbit, you will probably have launched quite a few sounding rockets by this point. So if you are running something like test flight or test flight, well, that should be a fair bit lower because you will almost certainly have used quite a few of these Aero B engines. So don't worry about that for now. It should be a bit better than that. But there we go. That is basically our stage that is going to get us to orbit. Now, I did mention earlier on that this is uncontrolled. So in order to keep this pointing prograde when we want to, we're going to come here and we're going to grab two of these separation motors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whack them there like that. I'm going to grab them and we're going to rotate them 15 degrees. This, if it plays two, why didn't it place two? There we go. That should place two. There we go. Perfect. Now, this is going to provide ullage for this stage, and it is also going to provide spin stabilization. So this rocket will be spinning, and it means it won't veer off course. We should be able to point this prograde, and as soon as it starts spinning, well, we don't need to worry about it going in all kind of random directions. I did mention Ullage, I will talk about that in a little bit once we get onto the next stage. So for the next stage, we are going to be grabbing a payload adapter. So let's find one that we like. I think I'm going to go for this one for this rocket. We are going to reduce this size down to 1.5 meters. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to grab yet again some more procedural avionics. We're going to place this on here. We're going to up this to 1.5 meters, but this time we're going to stick it to near earth configuration. Now the next step, we're going to grab another one of those separate structure tanks. We are once again going to change it to aluminium high pressure, aluminium two high pressure. We're going to make our diameter 1.5. I'm going to place a mount on this because I like the look of the mount. I think I'm going to go for a Saturn II mount. I seem to use this mount an awful lot in the Kerbal Gets Real series. And we are going to reduce our length to about 0.55 meters or thereabouts. That should do us fine. If I can just get it on perfectly, this is really upsetting my OCD right now. Come on, come on. There we go. 0.55. Now, in the Kerbal Gets Real series, I did use an XLR43 for my second stage for my first orbital rocket. Unfortunately, that no longer works because well, it's been upgraded, upgraded, updated to be ground lit only. So what we are going to use for this second stage, we're going to get the good old AJ-10 series early. So we're going to go in and unfortunately, the only configuration we have at the moment is the AJ-1037. And if you have a look, well, our ignition failure rate is 11.11%. .11%. That is a rather high ignition failure rate, but there's nothing we can really do with that for now. So the next thing that I'm going to want to do is this rocket is going to have a coast stage. So what I want to do is I need to be able to point this section prograde when we actually reach our apoaps or apogee. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go into command and control. We're going to get some of these RCS quads and we are going to place four of these just down here so that we can actually move this rocket around. We're going to go into the engine, so click this engine once again. We're going to purchase nitrous oxide, basically the best configuration that we have at the moment. Perfect. Now that's that all done. Now we actually need some fuel for this thing. So we're going to go in. We are going to grab a radial tank separate structure again, once again, using all of the separate structure tanks because they are cheap and we want to make this as cheap as possible. We'll set that up to aluminium two high pressure and we're going to reduce the diameter to about 200 millimeters. We won't really need any more than that. This is just to point us prograde once we reach our apoaps. Let's fill these up with nitrous oxide and I'm just going to offset them ever so slightly. Perfect. Now that will work wonders for that stage. I did actually forget to fill this up with UDMH and IWFNA. So let's do that now so that we've actually got fuel for our AJ-10 engine. And if we have a look, its burn time is now 116 seconds. This can burn for 115 seconds. So we're over burning by a second, but that hopefully shouldn't be too bad. Ideally, you want to burn these for their full burn time. Going over can lead to problems. Going under, and you're kind of wasting the engine slightly. So now that we have filled that up, the next thing that we're going to want to be doing is ullage. Ullage, I did mention it earlier. So in order for this engine to fire, well, our fuel needs to be at the bottom so we can actually fire up this engine. 
Once our first stage stops, well, the rapid deceleration will make this fuel float all over the place and we won't be able to light this engine successfully. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab some more of these separation motors and I am going to place four of them just somewhere around here. If I can get a good place to put these, that would be rather splendid. If we place those there, yeah, there we go, that will do us. So these are our ullage motors. So what this will do is when we stage this section, well, when we stage it, we will fire up these ullage motors and then we will have a separate stage to fire up the AJ10 series. So this will continue the acceleration so that our fuel remains down here so that we can actually fire up that engine. It's a very, very important step in RSS and RO to ullage your stages because if you don't, well, they're not going anywhere. So now that I've done that, what I am actually going to do is I am going to have a look at my staging and make sure that everything is where I want it to be. So these RCS, I want those up there because I want to activate them once this stage has finished because that is going to only fire up when we want to point this rocket prograde. So we want to fire our ullage motors up first, then we want to fire our AJ-10. That all looks good to me. So I want this to decouple at the same time as these separation motors go. Then we're going to fire up our Aero-B, and then finally we're going to decouple our actual probe. That all looks good to me. So if we have a look, our mass is now 2.9 tons. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to come in here and we are going to want to purchase avionics prototypes first and then we're going to set this up to three tons because that's roughly about how much we are going to need. And you can actually see the fact that I've bought avionics prototypes has already reduced our mass, which is absolutely wonderful. So now that we have done our second stage, well, it's time to work on our first stage. So once again, I'm going to go in and this time, I am going to grab myself an interstage adapter. So what we want to do with an interstage adapter is that top node is going to go on our engine. So that top node is the node that is actually going to decouple. So I'm going to place this stage at the same time as we fire up our ullage motors. That should do us just nice. Now I think what I want to do is I want to set this base to 2.2 meters and the top we already know that's going to be 1.5 meters. Let's get the height down a bit because we don't want our fairings to be ridiculously big. Fairings do weigh a small amount, nothing too huge, but if we can try and reduce the mass as much as possible, well, that would be great. Obviously, we're going to set our extra height up just a bit so it all matches up there. That looks like it might work. We're going to have to see when we actually place our fairings on there. Now, once again, we're going to have to get some more avionics. So we're going to place another unit of avionics on here. We are going to raise that up to 2.2 meters, which is going to be the diameter of this rocket. So that looks good. Now I feel like we're going to need to have a control mass of around 50-ish tons, I reckon. So once again, we do want to get our avionics utilization as close to 100% as possible. So we can reduce this ever so slightly. So 92.9%, that's not particularly bad. We've still got electric charge in here. If we go over here, we can see we've got duration of eight hours and 40 minutes. So that's absolutely fine. Now, once again, we're gonna go and grab a fuel tank. We're gonna make it, once again, a separate structure modular tank. We're gonna whack this up to 2.2 meters. We're gonna change our tank to be the best that it can. The tank that could, it's going to work. And now we're going to make this a length of 13 meters. There we go. That looks rather promising. So the engine that I'm going to be using on my first stage is going to be the LR79. So here we go. Here it is there. We can whack that on. And of course, we've only got the S3 configuration at the moment because we have only unlocked 1956 to 1957 orbital rocketry. But that doesn't matter. That does not matter. So now that that's done, what we need to do is we need to fill this up with Kerolox. So RP1 and liquid oxygen. And we can see now we've got 10,897 meters per second of Delta V. So this rocket is going to be way, way more than capable of achieving orbit. So this is pretty much the general structure of this rocket all done. 
there are a few other tiny little bits that I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to add some separation motors to this stage here, just so that this stage can go shooting back down to Earth whilst we take our second stage upwards and onwards to orbit. I'm going to offset these ever so slightly, just so that they don't get in the way of those payload fairings. If I could do that, please, that would be very nice. There we go. That looks good to me. And now let's actually grab our fairings and place them on. So I'm going to go for conic fairings because I feel like that's very time appropriate. There we go. We are going to just change this extra height just to make sure that it is exactly where we want. I feel that's like a good height. We're going to go in. We're going to reduce our density down to 0.01 because we don't need it any higher than that for this rocket. And then we're going to grab another set of fairings for our actual payload. There we go. And we'll reduce the density of that again. We don't need to mess around with ejection power or anything like that. That will do us absolutely fine. Now, we could place a boat tail on this section, but I think I am going to leave it for this rocket. Although, one thing that we do need to actually do... So if we come over here and we have a look, well, the blue ball, our center of lift, is way higher than our center of mass. And now even stock KSP players will know that that is very, very bad. That is bad. Blue above yellow, you're going to have a really bad time. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to come over to aerodynamics and we are going to grab ourselves some procedural wings. So we're going to place four of these. I'm going to set them at a symmetry of 45 degrees. There we go just like that. Now, the way that you can manipulate procedural wings like this with B9 procedural wings, what you've got to do is you've got to hover over it and you just hit J. There we go. And it brings up this lovely action window over here and we can kind of do all kinds of weird stuff with it, like make the length go really big. So yeah, I can just move, drag the slider along like that, or I can left click these to make them go up in slight increments, or I can right click to make them go up in even smaller increments. So that's one way of controlling procedural wings. Another way that I haven't ever really used before, taught to me by N9 Gaming, thank you very much, is you can actually hover over them and hold down keys like G. So we can do all kinds of cool stuff with them holding down the G key. We've got B, which is gonna send our rocket prematurely up to space apparently. T, so we can do all kinds of stuff like this with T. And yeah, so there are a few buttons that you can kind of use to mold these in different ways. And it's it's kind of a really cool way of actually doing this. So I think we're gonna want to have our center of lift just a little bit below our center of mass. Ideally, we don't want these wings to be super heavy. So there we go. I think that will do us just fine. There we go. We've got four wings on there. That looks good. And now we're going to need launch clamps. And I'm assuming if you're getting to your first orbital rocketry, you already know about this, but engines take a while to throttle up in realism overhaul. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fire this engine whilst we are still attached to the launch clamps. So let's grab, let's grab four just for symmetry purpose. And then now that this thing is pretty much all completed, well, we can go in and really check our staging and make sure that everything is where it should be. So we're gonna want to fire up our LR-79. Is it an LR-79? It is. We're gonna want to fire up our LR-79 to begin with. Then we're gonna reduce, reduce, release our launch clamps once this engine is fully throttled up. Let's just grab that down just a tad. Then. We are going to want to decouple that stage, and I think we're going to want those to fire at the same time. So our ullage motors will kick in, our not deorbit stage, but our separation motors will drag this down, and then we will activate staging once again to start up the AJ-10 engine. Then we're gonna get to our RCS stage, that's perfect. Then we're gonna get to our spin stabilization spa space <laughs> stage in space, Core words, it's hard to say all of these words. And then finally, we are going to light up our Aerobe engine. Now, I am going to want to get rid of these payload fairings at some point, probably after the AJ-10 series has actually fired up. So there we go. Let's go and put those there. And I think that looks like our staging is all completely perfect. And there we go. We have a rocket that weighs under 60 tons. That should achieve 
an orbit. It should achieve quite a decent orbit as well. You're not going to be able to get a rocket under 20 tons to get your first orbit. You can do it. You're going to need a lot more advanced technology than what you're going to have in 1955 to 1960 or whenever you're going to be going for your first orbit. So definitely make sure that you have that 60 ton launch pad unlocked before trying to go for that. Have it built. Definitely have it built. So Another thing that I do want to quickly point out as well, try, if you have seen my 10 tips video, try and make this tank, the 2.2 meter tank here. Well, try and use that diameter in other things. Hopefully by the time you've got here, you might have created some suborbital rockets that use a 2.2 meter tank. Reusability, just stick with reusability. Reusability is key for any save in RP1. But I do believe that that is that rocket all built up successfully. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to click on this little RP1 thing. And I'm going to check and make sure that my avionics are sufficient. And you know what? It looks like they are. So that's brilliant. So this thing is all built up. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go over to Crash and we are going to test it. But first, let's give this thing a name. And I'm going to be really inventive and just call it Orbital Test. Yes, that is really inventive. So let's save this up and we will go over to crash and actually launch this thing. Now, just before launching this, I am going to say there will be a craft file of this rocket in the description of this video. So if you want to actually fly this rocket, then it will be included. So with that, let's go and make sure that this thing actually works. So for this section of the video, I have sped this up to four times speed in post-processing. And what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about this flight profile. So once we hit about 100 meters per second, we are going to start pitching down this rocket. And we kind of want to be at about 45 degrees by the time we hit somewhere around 20,000 to 30,000 meters in altitude. Didn't quite make it for this flight, but that's kind of where you want to be. And once we've hit that, well, we're going to pitch down our rocket even further, trying to follow our orbit vector as close as possible. So we want to be following that prograde vector as closely as possible. Once we have expanded this first stage, well, that's when we want to be at about a pitch of zero and kind of really burning our horizontal velocity with that AJ-10-137. You did notice there that I kind of did mess that up slightly. I didn't start that AJ-10-137 as soon as I would have liked, and that's why we went a bit funky. But it was okay in the end. I did manage to get it under control. And yes, we didn't have any ullage issues, thankfully. I was a little bit surprised at that. But there we go. The AJ-10-137 has finished its burn. So now is our coast stage. What I want to do for this is I want to wait until our time to aquaps is about 26 seconds because our last stage burns for 52. So we're going to point at prograde. We're going to wait until it's roughly halfway to our time to aquaps. That really fast spin there was us actually achieving our orbit. So there we go. We can see we have actually made our orbit and it is quite a high orbit. It's a very eccentric orbit but you are going to be kind of getting these kind of orbits with your first orbits anyway. So there we go. We have a rocket that can go orbital. Now there is one final little piece that we do need to do, and I would highly recommend testing your rocket before doing this just to save you a lot of headaches and a lot of money. So we're going to come into the avionics screen, well, the RP1 screen, and we're going to go over to tooling, and we are going to tool all. So this rocket will cost us 60,000 to tool this. But as I did mention earlier, you might have used some of these diameters already. So it might not be this bad, but we're going to purchase this and we can see that our cost goes all the way down to 2,209 funds. And that's it. That is how to build your first orbital rocket in RP1. Like I have said, this could apply to realism overhaul in general as well. This will work in realism overhaul as well. If you're doing a sandbox save or anything like that, it is just a working rocket, I guess. But yeah, this is primarily focused on your first orbital rocket in RP1. But I hope this will have helped some people get orbital because as soon as you've gone orbital, well, RP1 is very fun after you have done that. 
and obviously you can do all kinds of things. And if you haven't already checked it out, well, I have a series on RP1. Obviously, that's Kerbal Gets Real. Go and check it out. I have gone way further than just getting Orbital. And yeah, no, it's all really heating up in the series at the moment. But that is the end of this tutorial video. If you have enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this video and would like to continue with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.